Now, the next type of business services which we are going to study is about insurance. Remember, in topic one, I was telling you that insurance helps you to face the business risk in a more better and a planned manner. Okay? How? When you have insurance, if you end up making a loss because of any business risk which you have faced, then to a certain extent that loss gets compensated. So let's understand insurance in detail. Okay, so it is a form of contract. When I say it is a form of contract, what does it mean? See, two competent parties who are able to make contract among themselves, who are capable of making a contract will come together and form a contract of insurance. So here, the insurance is all about getting compensated for an uncertain event. So if there is a loss because of an uncertain event, the compensation is being given to the person who has taken the insurance. So remember here, for example, if I have goods lying in my warehouse and if there is a fire and because of that the goods get destroyed, I will get compensated for the loss of goods. Okay. Now before we move on further, it is necessary that we understand certain important terms in insurance. Now remember, insurance has a different language, it, we don't use the normal day-to-day -day language. There are certain terms and terminologies which are used in insurance sector, so it is necessary that we get a brief idea. We are not going to deal with all the terms and terminologies because that is not required at this stage, but the basic terminologies has to be understood. Now the first is insured or assurance underwriter. See, he is the person who wants to get his property or who wants to get his life insured. So he is the insured, he is the person who wants the insurance, who is the insurer it is the company or the agency who is providing the insurance. So the company who is giving the insurance would be known as insurer and the insured is the person who has taken the insurance from the company. Policy. What happens is when the insurer decides to get insured, he will go to the insurer and, and then he will get a policy. Now this policy would be nothing but a return agreement, a contract between the two parties say that these are the terms and condition on the basis of which if this kind of event happens the loss will get compensated. What is premium? When you buy an insurance policy you have to pay a price okay you have to pay a premium. Now this premium is on a periodic basis okay for example if I am taking a life insurance then I need to go on paying the premium for a certain time of period. So on a yearly basis, I will be paying certain amount of money to the company, that is the insurer. Now, sum assured, what is that? This is the amount for which the policy is taken. So if I have taken 1 lakh insurance, that means this is the sum assured in case the loss happens, this is the amount I am going to get from the company. Let us see the functions of insurance. See, it provides you a certainty. Now, what happens is there is an uncertain loss for which you are getting your, yourself insured, right? So, when you are taking an insurance, you are giving a certainty to that uncertain loss because the per, a company, that is the insurance company, is agreeing to pay you a certain amount in case if you face a loss. So, remember the first function of insurance is to provide you certainty for an uncertain loss okay the next is protection obviously when you're getting yourself insured what happens here is that you're giving yourself protection for uncertain business risk now business risk can be for in form of destruction of goods or services or theft or any uh, destruction or any kind of loss due to natural calamities so you're protecting yourself from all those business risks because of the insurance. So this is the second function of insurance. The third is risk sharing. See here what happens is when you get yourself insured, the policy you are paying a premium, right? And then the policy which is issued by insurance helps you to claim certain amount in case there is a loss. So here you are sharing your risk of loss with the insurance company to a certain extent, right? So because of this, the loss which you have to bear for this uncertain event gets reduced. So remember when it comes to insurance, it helps you in reducing your losses and so you are sharing the risk which you are going to 
face because of all the uncertainties which are involved. Next is assist in capital formation. See, for insurance companies, what happens is they take the premium from you. Okay. Now they don't sit on that idle on an idle basis. They take the premium and they start investing that premium so as to earn a return. So it helps in assisting capital formation. Now let's move further and understand what are the principles of insurance. Now before I move to principles of insurance, let me just give you a quick, a quick brief about how the insurance company work. See what they do is these insurance company will accept the request of from customers who want to get themselves or who want to get their goods or services insured okay so they approach and they charge the, these insurance companies charge a premium okay now the premium which is collected is invested in some form so that the investments get a return for these insurance companies now remember all the customers who have come to insurance company will not face a loss because the loss is uncertain there is no certainty if the loss will occur or not so there would be only certain uh, customers who would face the loss that is the reason you will always see that the sum assured is hi in higher in amount compared to the premiums which we are paying okay now let's see the principles of insurance the first principle is utmost faith okay now this is based on the concept of Ubrime fide. Now, okay, this is an insurance term again which we generally use. Now, what does it mean? It says that the contract is based on utmost faith. That is, when the parties are coming to contract, okay, the insured, that is the person who wants to get himself insured or the, the person who wants to get the goods and services insured is ensuring that he is giving all the requisite details to the insurance company, okay. So, disclosure of material facts have to be done by the party to the contract. It shouldn't happen that, for example, you have a car and you want to get your car insured. So, you shouldn't hide the fact that your car has been involved in some kind of accident before or you shouldn't hide this fact that you have changed the engine or you have changed certain important parts of the car. So, you have to give all the details of the car to the person from whom you are taking the insurance. Secondly, let's take another example. You, we commonly take health insurance. Now, when you are taking health insurance, you need to ensure that you are giving all the details about the past accidents you have faced or the past illness which you have faced in your life. Only then the insurance contract would be valid. What if you fail to provide that information? Remember, in that case, what will happen? The insurance contract will become voidable at the wish of the insurance company. So what they can do is they can cancel the contract and not pay you the sum assured if the material facts have been not given by the customer to the insurance company. So remember the insurance is voidable if the material facts are not disclosed, disclosed by the insured to the insurer. Insurable interest. Now this is a very interesting principle of insurance. What does it say? You should have. That is the person who is taking the insurance should have financial interest. The subject matter of insurance contract, let's say suppose it is a car. Okay. Now you should have the interest in protecting the car from accident, theft or from fire. Right. It shouldn't happen that you do not have any interest on the goods on which you are getting yourself insured. Okay. If that is absent, then the insurance contract will not be uh, acceptable. It would be a voidable contract. Okay. So what happens here is the principle says that whoever is coming for insurance, they should have an insurable interest. So they should have some interest in protecting that property or protecting those goods or services. Okay. Now remember here. What uh, the second thing what you need to understand is by protecting the property or protecting the life they stand to the benefit on safety of the subject insured. See if my car gets damaged or if I lose my car I would suffer a loss. How? Because I would not be able to drive a car I will have to again go and buy a new car. 
so this is the insurable interest i have in my car now because of this i will ensure that the safety of the car is maintained so this is what the point is trying to tell you you are ben getting benefited because you are saving your car from getting uh, from losing it from because of theft or because of some accident okay now the next principle is indemnity what does it say now remember before i start indemnity principle doesn't apply to life life insurance okay all insurance contracts such as fire marine insurance all these are contract of indemnity what does this indemnity word means see the moment the loss happens because the insurance company is paying you the sum assured it is bringing you back to the position as if the loss never happened okay so the insurer here undertakes to compensate the insured for the loss which has been caused to him due to the damage or destruction of the property which was insured let's say take an example of the car my if my car had a value of 3 lakh rupees and it gets completely destroyed because of a natural calamity for which we had taken in insurance so then the insurance company will compensate the loss up to the sum assured so that i am in the same position as if the loss never occurred now let's see what is the next principle of insurance see this is a proximation cause what does it say it will get it says that the compensation will happen only for such losses which are caused by the perils now let's take an example if your goods are insured insured for loss against theft and loss against fire and if there is a fire which happens okay but to some goods gets destroyed and some goods generally what happens when the fire occurs some goods will get completely destroyed but there would be some goods who would be lesser when it comes to the destruction the quantity would be uh, the destruction amount or the destruct extent of destruction would be less so suppose after that the goods get stolen away okay the remaining goods get stolen away so when the proximation cause loss or proximation causes in force it means that if there are two or more losses like here the loss was loss of fire and loss of theft then the most dominant and the most effective cause would be the cause which would be considered for insurance purpose so here the loss is the natural consequence now what happened here is first i caught uh, there was a fire okay and then only the theft happened after the fire the theft happened right so when it comes to insurance the company with whom i have the insurance against fire that would be the company who would be paying me the compensation or who would be paying me the sum assured it would not be the insurance company who has given me the insurance against theft why because the proximation cause here was fire only because of fire my goods got lost so this is the proximation cause now let's see the next principle which is subrogation see what happens the moment your goods get destroyed for example the car you have insured you have taken a motor car insurance and it gets destroyed due to some calamity or due to some reason so then that car would become a property of the insurance company the same will apply to goods and services okay when your goods are getting insured and if there is a destruction of goods because of fire those goods become the property of the insurance company the reason here is because the those damaged goods can be sold by the insurance company so that they can recover some extent of the loss which they have faced okay so what is the subrogation it is a right of the insured in respect of recovery from an alternative source which is involved that means the insured that is the insurance company has the right to take over those goods so that it can go and sell and got try to compensate the loss which it has suffered because of paying to the person who has taken the insurance now the next is contribution what does it mean see if there is a double insurance many a times people take this especially in health insurance this is a very common thing wherein i'll take double insurance that is i'll take insurance from two companies simultaneously for the same cause that is health okay so what will happen here the insurers in case there is a loss will share the losses in proportion to the amount which has been assured by each of them so suppose if i am taking a health insurance of 5 lakhs from xyz company 
and I'm taking an insurance, health insurance of 1 lakh from ABC company. So when the loss occurs, okay, so when I'm getting hospitalized and I'm presenting the bills to both these insurance companies, the loss would be shared in the ratio of the sum which has been assured, okay. Next is mitigation. What does this mean? See, just because my goods are insured, it doesn't mean that if a fire happens, I don't take any steps, I sit nicely and relax, oh I have an insurance, so I don't really have to douse off the fire. You have to ensure that you take proper steps for the safety of the goods which you have insured. So you are taking reasonable steps to minimize the loss. So what happens if there is a fire, you have to call the firefighters, you ensure that you are putting some water or you are using the firefighting equipment which are there in your warehouse so that the loss or the damage is less compared to what it would have been if these equipments would have not been used okay so mitigation is that you take steps to ensure that the loss is minimized now this brings us to the end of the principle in the next video we'll do the types